college track and field is dominated by the same few schools every year. All the best recruits in the nation know who those schools are, and that is why they want to go there, even without a scholarship. The women of Arkansas won the NCAA indoor meet, again in 2024. That makes it their fourth in the past five years. In fact, you gotta go all the way back to 2017 to find the last time that a team, not in the SEC conference, won it all indoors. Even in the event that Arkansas didn't win, it was athletes like Jamelia Ford and Parker Valby, who did win and still represent the SEC. So it doesn't take a whole bunch of research to guess that they are the best women's conference in all of D1 track and field. If you watch my channel, then you know that I love college track and field. And whether you like it or not, they hand out a team championship trophy at the conference meet and again at the NCAAs. That makes college track a team sport, and Arkansas has apparently figured that out better than anyone else in the NCAA. They even had the four fastest 400 meter runners in the entire nation entering the championship meet to prove it. I also rank track and field recruits across the entire nation in every event to help determine who is really the best. And I offer my professional advice to students and families who want to get recruited. And they only bring that up because I'm honestly sick and tired of watching people tackle the recruiting process without any real idea of just how good the teams in any one conference actually are. Simply put, when LSU started winning national titles way back in the early 2000s with athletes like future Olympian Lolo Jones on the team, it basically started an arms race between them and every other team in their conference. The only way to win anything was to recruit like them. But there are over 30 different conferences in all of Division I, and nobody really knew how good any of them were, at least until now. That is why I ranked every single one of them, based on the individual team performances from within the conferences, for how good the teams actually were, pound for pound. I've already released the rankings for the more than 300 Division I teams on my website, SCARecruiting.com. So of course, a conference breakdown was the next step. I could tell you how I did it. You take conference, regional, and national ranking indexes. You mix it together with a whole bunch of math and even some professional judgment. But I'm sure you really don't care about that, so I won't bore you. So here is a breakdown of the top 10 women's conferences in all of Division I heading into the outdoor season. I'll spare you most of the details about the numbers and the math, because I'm still pretty sure you really don't care about it. But if you really want to know just how good any D1 conference actually is, then check that out on my site, and I'll put a link in the description below. But with everything we have to go off of, these 10 conferences are clearly the best heading into the outdoor season. And if you compete in D1, and you think I got it wrong, that's fine, because you and your team, and for that matter, your conference can prove me wrong with your performances during the outdoor season. And if anything that I say actually connect with you, it is always greatly appreciated. If you would please, like and subscribe. But if I don't, just let me know in the comment section because I try to read them all. I don't have time to explain all the things that my conference ranking system actually points out, but I've got to give you two numbers so you have a little bit of context. Apparently, the SWAT conference with an average team score of 27.6 is the worst conference in all of Division I, and it's probably because they severely underperform in the distance events. In the conference that is basically the definition of average in Division I, ranked 16th out of 31 in total, is the Atlantic Sun with a score of 39.8. The only other number I'm going to give you later is for the conference that ranks all the way at the top because the best conferences are way better than everybody else. And they also have to point out that women's track and field has 30% more scholarships than they give for the men. But all the teams are not fully funded. So the teams that actually do put out scholarship dollars can clean up a whole lot more talent on the recruiting board. It's the only logical explanation for the huge gap across the conferences. Starting off the top 10 is the Summit League, and they only made it that high because North Dakota State and South Dakota are actually really, really good. But number nine is the Big Sky Conference, and let's be honest, Northern Arizona is the real reason why. The Mountain West sneaks past them for number eight, and they have Colorado State to thank for that. However, the Big East is considerably better than all of them. And if you know anything about cross country, their distance programs 
are primarily the reason why. But you will be shocked when I tell you that the ACC is not as good as you think. They did not crack the top five. Instead, they're number six. If you check the numbers, all the conferences that did make the top five are legitimately better than them. Without Notre Dame and Clemson, they wouldn't even have made it this far. But that also means that the top five has at least one conference that nobody really expects to be that good. But the Pac-12 does live up to the hype in its final season, and USC is a big part of that. And they'll soon be joining the Big Ten, which comes in at number four on this list. Interestingly enough, Illinois is the best team top to bottom in that conference. So the Trojans versus the Fighting Illini is a new rivalry that I guess we'll all just get used to. But the number three conference in the nation, against all odds, is the Ivy League. That is a huge deal because they still don't give out any athletic scholarships. It also means there are really no bad teams in that conference if you actually face off with any of them, one-on-one -on -one in a duel. And they also put up points at the national meet with athletes like Maya Ramson going back-to-back -back in the 1500 and the miles representing Harvard. All that being said, the number two spot goes to the Big 12. And of course, they have teams like Texas Tech to thank for the edge. But remember, they are losing Oklahoma and Texas after this season, which is only gonna make the number one conference on this list even stronger. And of course, that is the SEC. And I told you I would give you one more number. They rated as a 109.2 on my scale. That means that all of their teams are twice as good on average as most of the other ones you would see from some of the other top 10 conferences like the Mountain West. You really can't win anything in the SEC without contending for a national title, which is exactly what Arkansas and Florida actually did indoors in 2024. Division I track and field has over 30 different conferences, most of which you barely ever hear anything about. There are good teams in all of them, and my net rating list is proof of that. But if you actually want to compete against the best of the best all season long, then it is abundantly clear that these conferences are really where you need to be. Remember to check the full ranking list on my website. And if you do compete in Division I for a conference that I did not mention, remember that your performances could be the difference between your team and your conference moving their way up. SCA Track and Field Gear is here. Fast is a lifestyle, and what you wear should reflect that. Order yours at scarecruiting.com slash shop, or use the link in the description below. It's a huge support to me and this channel, so I can continue to make you more content like this. And remember, it's always greatly appreciated if you would please like and subscribe. Zara.